Hi, this is Gary Rubenstein, and today I'm going to show you how Archimedes used uh, what's called the method to derive the formula for the volume of a sphere, which is V equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. He does two proofs of this in his career. Uh, one is a geometric proof, and this one he considered more of an informal proof, and it uses something known as the law of the lever. I'm going to show you how that works. Now the first thing to know about the law of the lever is if I have two equal weights, like in this case these two circles with equal area, they would balance with the fulcrum uh, if the fulcrum was right in the middle, uh, right between the two things. But if the things have different sizes, then the only way to get them to balance would be to move the fulcrum uh, closer to the larger object. So for instance, as I'm making this other figure smaller, in order for these things to balance, uh, the distance from the fulcrum to the smaller weight has to be bigger. As you can see, if you multiply EG, which is the length from the fulcrum to the bigger weight, times the, uh, the weight of the bigger thing, which is the area of the circle, in order for them to balance, GF multiplied by the weight of the smaller objects has to equal the same constant, in this case, 74.64. And the smaller that other object is, the closer it needs to the fulcrum needs to be to that uh, to that other to the bigger object. Now Archimedes' general strategy is that he already knows what the volume of a um, of a cylinder is, and he also knows what the volume of a cone is. He has the formulas for both of those. He's going to geometrically prove that this uh, cylinder would balance out two cones and two spheres. And from that, he's going to be able to figure out what the volume of the sphere has to be. So I'm going to show you how that works. But here's a nice 3D rendering of what his goal is. And he's going to do this with geometry. So he's going to prove that the, cil the cylinder would balance out these two cones and these two spheres. I'm going to show you how he establishes this uh, balance later. But for now, let's just say after he's established this, we could say that the volume of the cylinder ends up being 8 pi r cubed. The volume of the cone is 8 thirds pi r cubed. Uh, the cylinder is two cones and two spheres. Move over here, substitute in the, the volume of the, of the cylinder and the volume of the uh, cone here. Then it becomes an algebra problem and when you subtract 4 pi r cubed minus 8 thirds pi r cubed you get the famous formula that the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Uh, but now I'll show you how he establishes using geometry that this cylinder will balance out the two cones and the two spheres. Take a look at this diagram. I have circle with diameter AC. I also have on AC two squares, one drawn uh, with AC as the bottom side and one drawn with AC as the top side. So I have this big rectangle created of two squares. And I also have these two diagonals drawn in. So what I have here is a circle, a big triangle here, and also a big rectangle. Uh, AH is drawn to be the same length as AC. I also have this point M down here, and that actually I could move around. M is just uh, the point on the bottom of the rectangle, and when I make the line parallel to the uh, height of the rectangle, Q is where this line intersects, the bottom diagonal line, O is where it intersects the circle, and S is where it intersects the diameter. Well, we're going to use this picture to establish the relationship. There's a lot of lines in this picture, so one quick thing I want to establish is if we just look at the circle itself, uh, we have the relationship that AS times SC is equal to SO squared. That's uh, partly because AOC is a right triangle. Also, the uh, cross chords theorem allows you to, to say that. So I just want to establish that first. Now he's going to establish some relationships between the sides. For instance, he could say that SO squared plus AS squared, uh, because SO squared is AS times SC, he could replace it with that. Then he can factor out the AS to get SC plus AS. But 
SC plus AS equals AC. So now we have this relationship. Uh, so if we take this is equal to that, so we can say SO squared plus AS squared equals AS times AC. If we multiply both sides of this equation uh, by AC times pi, both sides, we get this. AC bracket pi SO squared plus pi AS squared equals AS uh, times pi A c squared. Now we can do a couple of substitutions. AC over here is equal to AH, so I'm going to change that to AH. Pi SO squared. Now AS is actually uh, equal to SQ because uh, this is uh, an isosceles right triangle. So I can say plus pi SQ squared equals AS times pi and a AC is part of this square and MS no matter where M is MS is also uh, equal to the size of that square so I'm going to call this M uh, SM squared so now we've got this relationship now this doesn't seem like a very important relationship but now he's going to utilize the law of the lever now the law of the lever says that if I have something like this, it means that 3 times 6 equals 2 times 9. But it also works the other way around. Let's say I had an, an, an equation like uh, 4 times 8 equals 2 times 16. That would mean that I could take a, a fulcrum and split it up so that one is 4 and one length is 2. And then if I put a 16 pound weight here, and I put an 8 pound weight here, that they would balance. Well, this thing has that form. We have something times something else equals something times something else. So he's going to establish that if I had circles, if I had a circle that had radius SM, and I put it at a distance of AS from the center of a fulcrum, it would balance out two circles, one with radius SO and one with radius SQ, if they were at a distance of AH from the center. Geometrically, what this means is if, if I have my picture here and I move it into the third dimension, if A is the center of my balance, my fulcrum, as this point moves around, this circle here will balance out these two circles. These two circles are distance AH from A, whereas this circle is AS from A. So take a look as I move that around. Every time I move it, this one circle at this position will balance out these two circles where their centers of gravity are at H. I'll just move that around a bit, give you a feel for what's going on. But all of those circles with uh, with radius SM together make up a cylinder. And those smaller circles, when they get put together, reconstruct a sphere and a cone. So when you put together all those circles, all these uh, vertical circles here, with SM as their radius, you get the big cylinder. Each circle balances out on the other side two circles, one that's part of the sphere, one that's part of the cylinder. Now the center of gravity of the entire cylinder is just the center of the cylinder itself, which is a distance of r, radius, from a. The center of gravity of the sphere and the cylinder, each of the circles individually has its center of gravity at h, so so does the entire thing. So this tells us the cylinder times the radius is the sphere plus the cone times two times the radius. That's, that's AH here. And uh, that means that if I move the cylinder over so that it's two times the radius, well, it would balance out two spheres and two cones, which is what we have right here.
the end.